So you're thinking of getting yourself an NR200P Max and you're wondering what is the best way to build on it? Well, you've come to the right place. That is the question I'm going to be answering in this video. So if you haven't seen the full step-by-step -step build guide I've done in this case, you'll find a link to that in the description. And if you are thinking of building in this case, you're probably going to want to check that out as well. So in that build guide, um, I used an RTX 3080, it's the ROG Strix model, and a Ryzen 7 3700X. I started off with two additional slim fans at the bottom, set to intake, and they were the Noctia Chromex fans. So testing the thermals out in this case was really straightforward because there is really only four configurations that you can test. So we can use the tempered glass side panel or the perforated steel panel. And we can test each of those both with and without fans at the bottom. Um, the AIO is at the top and it won't fit anywhere else. The graphics card has to go in a vertical orientation. So there really isn't any other configurations that you can test in this case. So let's take a look at the temperatures, starting off with the thermal configuration I used in my original build, which was the two fans at the bottom set to intake with the tempered glass side panel. So starting off with our thermal testing, you can see the results on the screen with the build we put together in the video with the tempered glass side panel. It is important to say that all fans are running in their stock fan curves in the motherboard BIOS. The next thing I did was replace the tempered glass side panel with the original steel perforated panel. Doing this, both our CPU and our GPU idled one degree hotter while there was one decibel less noise at idle. During the Ida64 stability test, our maximum CPU temperature came down by one degree, while our maximum GPU temperature came down by a whopping six degrees. There was no difference to the noise levels under load. So the results are fairly clear. In terms of GPU temperatures, you're much better going with the perforated steel panel than the tempered glass panel on the side. If you do really like the look of the tempered glass panel, um, it gives you an idea of how much in terms of thermal performance you're sacrificing for the looks. In terms of looks, um, I'm not a big fan of the tempered glass panel. Really all that you can see is the GPU and the AIO at the top. And actually I think the tempered glass panel doesn't look as good as the steel panel. And when you're leaving so much performance behind in terms of GPU temperatures, Again, for me, the steel panel would be the way to go. Now, the one thing I did notice was the build was actually quite noisy, and I think it was the two fans at the bottom that were the culprits, as I found this in my previous small form factor builds when I had to go with the slim fans. Noctia fans are very good, but the slim fans are definitely noisier than the standard thickness fans. So the next thing I wanted to test was removing the two fans at the bottom and looking at the effect that had on terms of noise and temperatures. And I tested it again, both with the tempered glass side panel and the perforated steel panel. So starting off with the tempered glass panel, removing the two fans at the bottom, both our CPU and our GPU idled three degrees hotter, while our noise levels came down by a whopping five decibels. During the Ida64 stability test, without the fans at the bottom, our CPU ran four degrees hotter, while our GPU was one degree hotter. Again, noise levels came down by five decibels under load. Moving on to the mesh panel, again, removing the two fans at the bottom didn't make any difference to our temperatures at idle, but our noise levels came down by four decibels. During the Ida64 stability test, our CPU ran two degrees hotter without the fans at the bottom, while our GPU was actually one degree cooler. Again, there was a noise saving of four decibels with removing the fans at the bottom. So results here are fairly clear. It was the two fans at the bottom that were causing the excessive noise and removing them, our noise levels came down by four and five decibels. And the PC was definitely much more comfortable to sit beside. And without those two noisy fans at the bottom, I was actually fairly happy with the noise this PC was putting out, both at idle and under load. What was really interesting in terms of the thermals was that removing the two fans at the bottom didn't really make that much difference in terms of temperatures with the perforated steel panel, while with the tempered glass panel, the temperatures increased significantly. So my advice to you would be, if you do want to go with a tempered glass panel, you're gonna have to go with two fans at the bottom. Those two fans are gonna come at an extra cost, both financially, because Noctia fans aren't cheap, and as well, the extra cost is going to come in terms of noise, and it is a significant increase in noise. 
So factoring all that in, my preferred build in this system would be to use the perforated steel panel, which is going to mean you're not going to need to put fans at the bottom. And I actually think it looks better with the perforated steel panel than the tempered glass panel. And the PC is going to be quieter and cost you less money. So that would be my preferred configuration in this case. So hopefully you find the video useful. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.